Yo, 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 we back live on location. Me and the blackest one and pulled up to LA, man, and we got Compton Zone in the building. Straight out of USC to Toronto. Made a little pit stop in San Antonio. Now he headed to my city, the shy city, Chicago Zone, man. He teaming up with Zach, with Zoe, with Vucci. We got my main man, DeMar DeRozan, in the building. <laughs> Feel him, son. Shake him up, my boy. Straight up. For sure. We appreciate you coming to mess with you, boys. You know, I got my Kobe and no limits on. We always rock with you, rock with your game on and off the court. The first question we ask everybody is, uh, when you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? First person? Ugh. Two that 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 was definitely memorable was Brandon Roy, B -Roy uh, killer B Roy and um, D Wade. D Wade. It was first two to where it was like, all right, fuck, I'm 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 in the league. <laughs> <laughs> them, them, them two was on another level. What they don't talk about B Roy enough. What what was B Roy doing? That he was just like he's. It's crazy because people really don't talk about yeah, B Roy. Yeah, like fact. B Roy probably. Like and looking back on it, he was young too. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, those Portland days, he was young, but he was so fucking skilled every way. Yeah. From, yeah. <laughs> from all three levels. Yeah. You know what I mean? He take you to the post, mid range, three pick and roll. He meeting you at the top. Like every facet of, of his game was on a different level, bro. Like he, he was, was stronger like, than he looked. Yeah, he was bro. Yeah, than he, he was strong, too. explosive. He had all that. He had he had everything in his bag, bro. He was he was a motherfucker. Yeah, I was in Portland when they came in, and saying he took the ball and just ran with it. Yeah. And one thing I used to uh, like when I watched him, his his control was yeah. just just crazy. His stop and go, he knew when to turn it on yeah, up and go fast, pace. and he knew mm -hmm. when to just pace on through the lane and then speed up in there. Yeah. I was like, man, that man, his time and his stop and go was just. Crazy, yeah, I, him different. going against like Kobe and D Wade. I was like, yeah, he, he finna be one of them boys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Compton, growing up in Compton. How was the uh, growing up in Compton? I know we was around them younger days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, was it like? Was it like what everybody think they see on TV, NWA, and all of that? You know, it's crazy. Growing up, like I'd be lying to you to say. It. It was it was crazy because growing up in it, I just thought it was normal. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, whatever I was going through, you know, it was it was normal. You know, you you knew what to look out for. You knew what to expect. You knew where to go, where not to go. What this street was, what this street wasn't. So, you 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 was raised in it, understanding the caution and the the survival tactics that you needed to have. But you know, obviously, when I got older, you know, by the time I got in high school, and it's like, all right, I'm I'm, I'm losing people close to me. You know, you start to kind of comprehend and understand like what 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 murders really with death man yeah you know what yeah. i mean and you know you start understanding like you know you start putting a price on life and understanding like damn i just lost a close friend because of what you know what i mean you start right. questioning right. later on but growing up it was you know it was normal you know mm -hmm. what i mean but you know looking back on it, it definitely was tough it was like you know just being definitely being raised in, in an aggressive environment that you you have to adapt to you know what I mean? Who put the ball in your hand? Who uh one of those instead of swaying you towards what what everything else was going around you? I was who put uh, the ball for sure. My dad, my my dad was always into sports. You know, he had me playing everything. If it was t ball, fucking, so you he know, fell out straight with a for the yeah into sports. Yeah, you know, he was one of the dads. Like shit, every weekend he take me to the park, do some, put me in different activities and everything. So, um, I gotta give credit to pops for sure. In high school, when you start getting ranked, you start seeing your name and you starting to be one of the best in the state, not only the state, but the yeah. country. What year was that when it stuff when it started? Really, when it really started like standing out for me, I, I want to say probably the end of my sophomore year. It's really when it really started hitting because, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm in different basketball environments. Like I'm going to the East Coast now and I'm seeing- Like just when you start playing with yeah. Master P on the AU team? Yeah. I, yeah, when I started playing with P, I probably started playing with P about like eighth grade. But, you know, I wasn't the best player on that team at that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was probably four or five other guys that was ahead of me at that time, but I just stuck with it. And by the end of my, you know, sophomore year, 
Man, you know, I'm, 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 I'm ending up at camps on the East Coast and you competing against, you know, dudes that talk funny. You like, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like that's when you really like, all right, yeah, now, yeah. now I made it. Cause you the know, I'm playing, slang, against, yeah. Yeah, I'm playing against <laughs> dudes from the country, yeah. East Coast dudes, dudes from the Midwest and you know, you competing, you know what I mean? So end of my sophomore year for sure. What did you learn about being around P? Cause P is like legendary. Yeah. When you first met him to play, like to get approached yeah. by Master P, Bro, it P. Was, how did that even come about? First, I I didn't believe it because the team that <laughs> I, I initially was on, like we we broke up, so P basically like took over all the kids that didn't have a team. Mm -hmm. So we was like, all right, we're gonna play for Master P team, but we thinking, you know, he just gonna sponsor it. First practice, he had practice every practice. Yeah. Coaching, playing against us, and it, it turned into like a family oriented thing. You know what I mean? To yeah. where, you know, next thing you know, we, we had dinners on a weekend, whole family, you know what I mean? And it, and it became something bigger than basketball to where it was like, you know, you know, he took me in like one of his, one of his kids, yeah. you know what I mean? And to this day, you know, I appreciate him more than, more than anything. And, you know, that's a relationship I never really talk about. But if you know, you know, you yeah. know what I mean? Like he he definitely was a father figure to me, you know what I mean? I feel like he don't get enough credit for what he's done as, as you know, that father figure. Yeah, you know, yeah. everybody know the, you know, the no limit and everything he's done in that in that realm. But just watching, you know, we got to meet Pete early on at Jordan yeah. Camp. We had Romeo and all the kids there and all that different stuff. And then played against him when he, mm -hmm. you know, had his cup of tea with, with Toronto and Charlotte. And um so during that whole time, it's just like you see him then and just look at him now and this dude, like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He got groceries, he doing this, and then to see the, the things and the way he's raised up his kids mm -hmm. is the thing that you see the most. It's like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, being African-American, I'm proud to see the way he's yeah. going about it and then the way that, little, you know, little Romeo is handling yeah. his business and the, and, the, and the younger sons are coming up and they mm -hmm. getting the, the, the crazy endorsements yeah. with the college game. Just to see P been on it. For the he longest, and it's it. like yeah. to be able to migrate from you know the street lifes and to bring that into legitimate businesses and put your kids in that position is just crazy to see. And I don't feel like he really get a lot of flowers yeah, for it. He, he don't, cause he's like you said, he been doing it since day one, bro. Like it's crazy, exactly what he doing now. He was doing with me and everybody else who played on the team. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's nothing new. So when I see it now, it's it's I don't even think nothing of it because it's been that. You know what I mean? It's crazy how. He he always educated us and at the same time showed us like what his life was really like. You know what I mean? Like I remember times he used to be like, You sure y'all wanna go to these concerts? We eighth grade, ninth grade, like, hell yeah, we're gonna go to a concert. <laughs> we go to a concert, it's a whole different type of element, but he break down the whole, you know, you know, the business part of it to help us understand. You know what I mean? Even if we didn't understand it as we got older, especially for me. A lot of things started to make sense why he yeah, did a lot of stuff he was doing. Then, you know what I mean? Like, older you and, did. and I applied that, you know, when I went into the league. Like I was around P when P had all these cars outside, right. big houses and all this stuff. So, you know, he always taught, you know, materialistic things don't matter. You know, wow. so by the time I got to the league, I didn't want nothing but to understand and learn the game and the business so I could better myself and whatever comes after me. So you know, I definitely gotta give him his his credit and his flowers for sure. Yeah, we uh, funny story about P. We was working out with P. Uh, <laughs> P was trying to be on the Clipper squad yeah, and, yeah. and play with her. So P was like, "Yeah, man, they need to go on sign me, man. We don't even gotta use they plane. We can use my plane." <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, that's P. Uh, Big Q was like. Yeah, we need to sign P. <laughs> gotta understand, now. everybody gotta understand. We played for the for the for the Donald Sterling led yeah, Clippers. Now this yeah. was, you know, we didn't even have our own plane. We yeah. had, a, you know, we was like leasing yeah, the plane yeah. back then. Most teams there was some stuff since you know they was getting their own plane yeah, and yeah. doing big. We were not that. Damn, who some of them guys in high school? Because you came up, you know, y'all era. You got a lot of hitters, a lot of guys that's in the league that you've been seeing. Since you was 15, 16 yeah. years old, these yeah. guys have been around playing against you. Who were some of them guys you came up in high school that you was like, man, he nice? Man, I, I think I told, was telling somebody this the other day. One of the toughest players that I had to deal with that I hate playing that I hate playing against in high school was Drew Holiday. 
Yeah. Drew Holiday. This from, this from when we was like 11, 12. The Drew yeah. you see today yeah. is the <laughs> Drew when we was 11, 12 years old. You know just. what I mean? He was he was always ambidextrous, skilled, and he just had this whole demeanor like he don't see you. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like He's I might, just solid. He's just solid. <laughs> I'm going to go out there, do what I got to do, any, any lock up. He like, what I'm telling you, what he is today is what he was when he was a kid. So That's crazy. I got I to gotta give it to Drew for sure. When you got announced to to be like a uh, McDonald's All American and get it out, they didn't have Jordan uh, Classic when we they, was out. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, they they when had we it. came out. They just had McDonald's and. Nah, he and, went to Jordan Classic. Yeah, I know he did, but they didn't have it when oh, we you, was out. Y'all didn't have that. We mm-hmm. didn't have it. They just had McDonald's no, and, yeah. and that's right. Kentucky Blue Derby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else? Was it the Magic game? Was it Magic? Magic have a game? No, nah, it was McDonald's, Kentucky Derby, and USA. You know, you can play in three. Three yeah. All Star games. Yeah. We definitely didn't have a Jordan class yeah. at all. Yeah, but you came up in there. How was that to get selected and be one of the top guys to Man, be selected? To... It was crazy for me, especially like I remember even going staying home and going to Compton High. Like I had so many people tell me like, "Man, you need to go to a bigger school. You got to go to school like Oak Hill or Dominguez mm-hmm. High School. You got to go to these schools so you be recognized to make McDonald's by the time you graduate." Um, so for me to make it and go through everything I went through, staying home, going to Compton High, where you know we didn't have a big name, we wasn't the greatest team, and you know, so for for me to make it, it was it was it was a special moment. I definitely remember when you get announced for the McDonald's game. You remember where you were when you was watching it and all that? Cause I remember sitting at home. I was actually mad when they announced me. Short story about that was that you know how when they show your picture and they finally announce you, yeah, yeah. they show all my little basketball highlights of me at high school. Then they put my picture up with all my little stats and my name, Quinn Richardson, but it was Richard Jefferson's picture. Oh damn! <laughs> now I, remember. I have nothing bad to say about you, RJ, but we do not look alike. Right, that was right. that was wrong. And yeah. they put my picture up when it was his turn. I was like, Oh yeah, they had they had it all mixed up. <laughs> what yeah. is going on? Yeah. Yeah, Where was funny. y'all uh, McDonald's game? Milwaukee. It was in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Y'all had hitters on like Kimba and Kimba, Tyree Evans, Shump, Shump, uh, Shatown, Brandon Jennings, Brandon Greg Jennings. Monroe. Um, oh, yeah, Moose. Had Bro, we had we had we had we had some dudes. It's, and uh, whoever, I'm sorry if I'm missing anybody else, but we had we had some dogs. I ain't gonna lie. And to get picked for Jordan game. You know what I'm saying? That was the first time you met Jordan when you at the game? I was, yeah, that probably, I went to Jordan camp before, but oh, you Santa know, Barbara? Yeah, in Santa Barbara, yeah. but you know, you know how it go when all yeah. the kids line up. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't count that, but the first time it was definitely Jordan Classic. It was how, how, how was that? Oh man, he talked <laughs> how shit. How was that experience? I mean, it was crazy. I remember we <laughs> took the picture, he was back there talking shit. He was back there talking shit, but it was one of those moments, like I didn't expect nothing less, you know what I mean? But. It was dope. It was dope just to be selected and also meet them. Um, it was it was it was dope, man. Could it have been anybody else than USC? Was it anybody else that almost got you? Yeah, I almost went to Florida State. Um, mm, you almost crossed that whole. Yeah, I almost man. crossed the whole thing. But <laughs> was, uh, wait, was Leonard Hamilton was the yeah, coach? Yeah, he, right? he was there. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean. So he played a big part in in. in Almost getting me to go there. Yeah, you know Hamilton's I mean? a good guy, like, man. I love Hamilton. Hell of a dude. I remember meeting him. It was just, it was just something about him that just felt real and authentic, to where it was like, all right, I can mess with this. But I took it unofficial there, and that was during like the hurricane season. And I was like, nah, Ooh. I can't. I can't. Oh, hurricanes ain't nothing. Yeah. It's just a little storm. I didn't know. Man. You know what I mean? I'm 16. Like all He's I know like, is sunshine yeah. and palm trees. You know what I mean? Like, seen that everybody talking I about seen board that. and stuff. Yeah, you, bro. It, it, that's when I went. That's when all the crazy stuff. They, I'm like, nah, I can't do this. Who am I gonna call? You like, you USC. A lot of guys. Did a lot of guys be like, man, you go to USC, man. You ain't gonna get an opportunity to yeah. go to the league. And yeah. so, that's what I could like. Because you kind of like started that wave. Yeah, no. Like, yeah. After you, now USC at least got one or two coming. Because we was here <laughs> during that time, yeah. and it was like it was known you supposed to go to UCLA if you really trying who USC nah, trying yeah. to football. No, nah, like, yeah, that and that's how it was. And for me. I, the same approach I took to stay home and go go to my high school. I took the same approach with SC. Like, all right, it ain't it ain't too many dudes coming out here. It's known as a football team, but let me go here and, and trust whatever I could do. Just just me being overly ambitious, like yeah. you know, me like I could probably start some here. Yeah. Why not? You know, yeah, you're I mean? a different breed if you go to USC. No, for sure. Yeah. A lot of guys. 
they on purpose choose USC because they yeah. want to go against the top dog. Exactly. So that was they my try to say UCLA. Yeah, yeah, that was and that was my whole mental on that for real. Yeah. So tell me this, and when you were growing up, like, is it like how you see in some of the movies, Love and Basketball, USC versus UCLA was like, was it was it a big deal yeah, when you was, went? Yeah, it was a big deal. It was it was a big deal. And the crazy thing, we we played them in the Pac-10 tournament um, to go to the championship, and I just remember we sold out the whole Staples Center. Played there and Ooh, I and know it, that had to be bro. It was, it was it was to this day like it was like like one of the craziest games I ever played against. You know, played been a part of because you understand the tradition behind it. You right. know what I mean? And I think going into it, I really really felt the emotions of it. We played in a conference twice, one once at home and once on the road. But in a Pac-10 tournament, it was like it was a different different breed, bro. When you got to college, like the uh... You know, you, you always want to test your game on the level. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So when you got to college, I know you, everybody questioned themselves because they oh, got to yeah. yeah. see what it is. But you came right in, got you a quick dub and some change mm -hmm. right away. <laughs> like, did that give you instant confidence? Yeah, but it, it was so many up and, up and downs early on yeah. when I got to college because, you know, you played that, that one good game and, you know, I, well, shit, you ain't go to college. He don't know. Yeah. Thank you. I'm about to say, Pause right there. <laughs> you ain't gonna be here. He you know. Not. So going to college. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like you play that. You you had a good game. You just you know you kind of feel yourself, and it's like the college coach like I don't give a damn about that shit. You know what I mean? So humble you quit. Yeah, it's it's, it's definitely humbling because it, it was such an up and down like first two months for me in college to where it was like, you know, I had days where it's like, damn, I'm supposed to be one and done. I might have to come back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just had a game. I had a good game two games ago, but why last couple games, I only been having 12, 14, you know yeah. what I mean? So that's a, that's an interesting perspective. Like, cause when I was in college, I think it was kind of the beginning of it. You remember Larry had just went the year before, so mm -hmm. it was not, Talk about the pressure of that, like being that guy that's coming in and being projected. Oh, he's not going to be yeah. here long. Like walking through the door, yeah. everybody's supposed to know that you you projected as this one and yeah. done. Like you say, you have 12 or 14. What type of thing does that do to your mindset or confidence? It's definitely challenging because one, you walk in, you playing with guys that's been there for two, three years that's already established. And, you know, I'm pretty sure their goal is to make the NBA too. And it's all of a sudden like, Yo, this 19 year old kid, I mean 18 year old kid is supposed to come in and just do his stint and get out. Yo, I've been here putting putting right. in, you know, work. Work. You know what I mean? So you 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 battle in with that off rip. You gotta earn the respect from your teammates. Then dealing with the pressures behind, you know, the coaching, coaching staffs and you know, that, you know, especially for me coming from high school, relying on my athletic ability. My first time really being placed in a structured environment on how to play basketball. Yeah. And now you got to kind of follow suit what the coaches want you to do. You know what I mean? And a lot of frustration come with that because it's like, yeah. well, well, fuck. I just was getting 30, 40 yeah. doing my thing. Why you just want me to stand here and set a back screen and do this, do this, do this, do this? You know what I mean? Like yeah. It, it, yeah. it, all that comes in into play. Then you're dealing with the outside noise. Then you're dealing with... Well, you're supposed to do this, this, that, and the third. So it, it becomes frustrating, you know what I mean? So it took it took me time to figure out. To get an attorney, mm -hmm. to get U, USC an attorney, yeah. like that's that's a big thing. How was it? How did how was that feeling to get the team in the tournament and go play in the tournament? Man, it was it was everything because we had to win the Pac-10 tournament. Yeah, we had to go. We had to win the whole thing just to get a spot. Mm. So I remember before the Pac-10 tournament start, we all met and we basically just had a conversation like, look, it ain't no N NIT for us. We're not, we not doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, look, we got to go out here and win. We ain't going to sugarcoat it. We got to go out here and win every game. And from that moment on, it was like, it was like the biggest challenge at that time in my career because it's like, well, fuck, I want to make the tournament. I know these other five players that's in my class where we just McDonald's, they going to the tournament, man. Oh, they, 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 they first, second, third, yeah. fourth seed in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, nah, I got to get in this. So for me to help us win, get get MVP of the Pac-10 tournament and get a spot, man, that, that, was, that was dope, man. That was dope.
And the, the playing the tournament, because the tournament is the biggest thing. That's yeah. You got to win. And yeah. watch to get the opportunity to play. You see how they set it all the way up. Yeah. For the teams to yep. to get a win. I know it's hard to, to win the whole thing, yeah. but just to get in the tournament, get a win, just, and just get that atmosphere and that environment. How was that for you? Man, it was dope. I think we played um, in the Vikings arena. First of all, that was my first time playing in the football. Oh, yeah. In, uh, in, 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 in the dome. Not the new one, the old one. Right. It was the, the old uh, one. I can't think of his name, bro. <laughs> Me neither. I can't. Metrodon, there you go. Okay. There you go, yes. I didn't want to say the Thank wrong you. word. I was thinking about you. Yeah, me. I ain't gonna... So when we played there, just walking in there was kind of, it was an intimidating, intimidating feeling because, you know, you looking up and it's like, first of all, the ceiling don't fucking stop. Right. You know what I mean? Like, all these people in here and everything. So just go in there and get a win. I think our first game we played um, Boston College. Go out there and get a win against them was dope. Um, we played against Michigan State. Took them down to the wire. They end up going to the whole thing, getting smacked by um, North Carolina that year. North Carolina won, but you know, just to go out there and compete, man. When we really wasn't supposed to be there, yeah, it was it was, it was dope. You played with uh, Taj Gibson, yeah. Like I, I like Taj. Taj got a solid game. I think he got better in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He looked like a guy that you want to play with. Like, real OG, yeah. Real, yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was that was, really, that was my dog. Yeah. Like, this one's yeah. the oldest rookie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Ty, yeah. Like, speak on that. You uh, you and Ty's in college, and just Man. to see where he was in the league, and you know, yeah. being part of good teams like the Bulls and stuff like that. Taj was the one player that kind of brought me in right away when I got the SC. You know. Um, He's a hell of a dude, man. On and off the court, hell of a dude, man. And um, he's a hell of a leader. Um, so to get the chance to play with him, to see how he was, to have that relationship, like, you know, we don't talk every day, but if you see me and Taj, you would think like, right back right, God damn, off. you know what I mean? You, <laughs> yeah. you know, like that's that's what yeah. type of dude he is, and that's what type of relationship I got with him. And you know, you see you see him now, still being in the league. Um, Still kicking, he he's he's one of those veteran dudes you want yeah. on your team. Your OG now, nah. no, nah. yeah, he's OG one of like you now, nah. nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen to him, seeing him get signed back just the other yeah. day with the Knicks, and you listen to him, you know the impact that those type of dudes. Yeah. I mean, we know because we've been in it long enough, and yeah. you know that he, regardless of how much he plays, that he's gonna impact that yep. team. I mean, he's still in a position where he's still really out there playing yeah. and impactful too, though. So he doing both. When you lost to Michigan State. Did you know right away that like you was out of here? Was it like here. it was so? so you, that's what <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. Some people like some people know yeah, we, we but that's why you, I would, that I appreciate the honesty because some people would get up here and be like, "No, I didn't make my decision." Like some some of us, we know. Like sure. as soon as I said I was going back to school. For, for my summer year, I knew that it was over. Yeah. It didn't matter what was going to happen. I was yeah, gone after that year. It was a point gone. So that's why I appreciate that. Uh, listen, I, I, nothing against nobody, but I'll be honest. I, I, I try to understand like when some dudes lose in a tournament and you know they get emotional and all that. I'm, it's tough and all that. Nobody want to lose. <laughs> but as soon as we lost, as soon as the buzzer went off, in my head, I'm like, I'm out this motherfucker. I'm going to leave. Like That was my next... <laughs> That, that was my next thing, you know what I mean? People could have pop. That's the truth, and that is the real happy just, sometimes. Yeah, real yeah. talk, like just being this, honest. Hey, I appreciate that honesty. Did you think you was gonna get drafted by anybody else? Um, I didn't want. I didn't want to get drafted by nobody else. Um, you wanted to go to Toronto. I want to go to Toronto. Toronto had came and see me work out probably like a week or two prior to the draft, and it's probably one of my best workouts. And and after the workout, they basically like guaranteed me like, yo, if you at nine, we're gonna take you. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Right away. So the 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 vibe and everything I got from from them was like, all right, cool. I got one. I worked out for probably like six teams um that had a spot before Toronto. But nah, I didn't I didn't I didn't wanna go nowhere else. I didn't wanna go nowhere else. That first long flight from LA to Toronto yeah. and you 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 know you go through customs and all that and you get to Toronto. How was that? <laughs> Bro, that was probably from I mean I never forget the day. Leaving LA with all these bags, not nothing matched up for the winter time at that time. I ain't had no winter clothes, but the flight landing, not knowing how to do the custom fill out form. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get to the airport. And you know you seeing stuff in two different languages, one in French, English. You you know what I mean? It's like it becomes overwhelming because all right, 
it's a it's really another country. You yes, know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just got a passport two weeks ago. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like it was it was definitely like it felt like a brand new start. You know what I mean? I had to learn it. I had to go through it, and I, it was it was one that to this day uh, I, I'm appreciative of it because it was it was tough. It was tough. I ain't gonna lie. You was one of the guys that was fortunate enough to actually go to the draft, be in yeah. the green room, and like do that whole process and, and you know, the whole week leading up everything and then actually to get your name called and walk across that stage and shake David Stern's hand. Like, tell me, all of us, you know, that's everybody's dream and everybody's moment. For you, how did that feel to actually get to that, to this achievement and experience that moment where you on stage and you looking back into the camera and the crowd and you know everybody you ever knew looking Watch at this you at home TV, on TV yeah, really. seeing you. Man, it was, it was, what what was more crazier for me was just to sit there at that table, seeing my mom, seeing my dad. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, saving. you know, you, you I remember just having a moment sitting there like, yeah, I remember y'all trying to figure out how to keep the lights on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like straight up. Like so it, it it it's that burst of emotional impact that you gotta take in because it's like, yo, I'm really sitting here and I'm waiting for my name to get called, but I wouldn't be nothing without y'all two. You know yeah. what I mean? So I had I had a lot of that moment of me just really feeling feeling overly appreciated for them. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yo, I did everything I said I was gonna do. Now I got us here. You know what I mean? So whatever happens next is, you know, it's it's a new start for me to even do more. You know what I mean? So it, it, it felt surreal, but for me, like everything went to them because I wanted them, I wanted to see them enjoy the moment enjoy more the moment. than me. You know yeah. what I mean? Let me ask you a uh, funny question. Did you change your money? Did when you I have, first got there, that's, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> when I first got there, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Probably like my rookie year, right? I, I think I would took like five thousand dollars and changed it. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this, I'm taking pictures with it. I got the the, the brown, the, the green, I got every color. Yeah, like, color. <laughs> I did, I ain't gonna lie, I did, my first we year. We all did. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. That's why he asked I me. Did. I, 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 just think, I just thought about, I was like, man, when we used to go over there, they'd be like, yeah, you gotta go and change your money. That's to what buy hey, you're, you're a real one for that. No, I ain't that, nobody ever that. asked that, bro. That's a real question. Yeah, To answer your question, bro, yes, I did. I ain't gonna lie, I did. I used to, I, I wanted to stack of it just to have it and yeah, I did. You in Toronto and like, you know, before even, you know, in high school, college on coming up, the thing about your game is, oh, he's a dunker. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a dunker, that's all he do. He's he's dunk. And I know you heard it as well, but when did you feel like uh, was that year where you showed everybody that you ain't a dunk? Like I, my mid range game is one of the best in the league. Yeah. I can do this, I can do that, and I can hit big shots. Yeah, probably. I want to say my fourth or fifth year where I really kind of like put it all together. My my rookie year was tough. I was the only rookie. I I played with Chris Bosh, Turkaloo, yeah. mm-hmm. Jose Turk. Calderon, yeah. Antoine. Uh, you know, yeah. Like I played with a bunch of older dudes. So that next year I, we was terrible. So I'm trying to figure out my third year. You know, just trying to. It was a lockout year, so it was tough. So going to like my fourth. Fifth year, that's when I really just felt comfortable and felt like myself. Yeah. Uh, and I, I could do more and I could show more than just being an athlete and, and dunking the ball. Yeah. Did that lockout help help that out? Yeah. It, 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 helped, it helped the confidence because, you know, it's only so much working out you can do that everybody know we all played all that whole lockout. Yeah. Every week it was playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? During the weekends, even stuff that wasn't on camera, all we did was play. You yeah. know what I mean? So to gain so much confidence in, in playing against pros consistently built confidence to a whole nother level to where coming out that lockout, it was, you know, I was ready to go. To come behind like Vince Carter and Chris Bosch for Mr. Toronto and yeah. you know what I'm saying? And the love that they give you. Y'all started being bad and then you turned it around. What was that moment where you feel like, man, the city is behind me. They believe yeah. in me to be the best player. Cause a lot of people feel like the era that y'all was in, y'all didn't supposed to be in that position. Right, yeah. Um, and that was the beauty of it because yeah, we that was, was the beauty of we, it. We we was counted out. We didn't nobody really expected anything yeah. from us. We was always underdogs. 
I remember teams coming in there. I remember we always used to have these Sunday games. Y'all probably know. Yeah. Probably yeah. Play, Sunday you know, games. Sunday yeah. Games. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Them early Sunday games. Yeah. And teams would come in and be like, you know, fuck it. Saturday night, we still going out because Sunday, yeah, we still going to get the win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like That was the whole perception of coming into Toronto. Toronto. You know what I mean? So I always used to take a lot of stuff like that personal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I used to always express that to her, like, yo, we got to change this narrative. We got to change this fact and, and be somebody that, you know, when they come in here, they like, nah, we can't go out. We got to get our rest. You know what I mean? So to see us start from there and, and slowly build us get to the playoffs, you know, we win 50 games, 50 – Five games, mm -hmm. 58 games, 50, you know what I mean? That's what it was all about to even get into the conference finals for the first time, to just seeing how much the city evolved and, you know, starting something that just came with a thought, you know what I mean? And, and it, it definitely was a, a crazy time for sure. Did you personally know Kyle before he got traded to the team? No, I didn't, I didn't personally know him. I mean, I, I knew him. Just from like everybody yeah, playing against each everybody other, playing against them. so so how did that bond begin? And how did I mean? Obviously, we know the you know where it became how it got to where it went. But you know, tell me how did that bond begin to grow? When it got traded to us, the first year we played together, um, since I've been sitting here, I, I didn't talk to Cal half as much as I as I have talked to y'all right now. Right? I didn't talk to him at all. Like right. you know what I mean? Like anybody know Cal? He's 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 a, he's a he's for Philly, yeah, and he's an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> and obviously, I was still young, and I still had my own Compton mind to where it's like, yo, who's this dude? Why why he acting like this? Why he yeah. this? Why he this? But that year went by, and I I don't know what made it click to where it was like. Next thing you know, we we on the exact same page, but it all came from, you know, I seen his work ethic and how much the game meant to him. You know what I mean? And just me being a competitor, I wanted to know more. You know what I mean? And I think, I don't know what happened. I think it was something that just clicked for us to where on the court, it was just like ease. You know what I mean? Next thing you know, it trans it it, it turned into something bigger than just basketball. You know what I mean? But it, it all started because his love and his passion, his knowledge for the game was something that I just couldn't ignore. That's why I, I love y'all. Y'all era of, of, of Toronto, because it's like, man, the two top players, the two underdog players, mm -hmm. people didn't expect y'all to be all-star. Mm -hmm. They didn't expect y'all to to win as much as, as y'all mm -hmm. won, and for it to be y'all two in Toronto, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, a team that a lot of people didn't want there, I think that's even more special. And you know how people try to make it feel like just because you ain't win a championship or you mm -hmm. didn't win the ultimate goal that you ain't accomplished. Right, right, right. Nothing, like, mm -hmm. people make you feel like, I got drafted. Right. <laughs> like they yeah. can never go back. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I accomplished something. I did something. So with that team, I always respected them teams, even though y'all lost to Le LeBron, but mm -hmm. I always respected them teams because y'all was there every single year. Every every year. Because yeah. it could have been anybody else, yep. but y'all there every single yeah. year. Yeah. Trying to accomplish the ultimate goals. So yeah. I always respect it. What was your uh, first All Star game when you first got announced to be an All Star? Now you the you won the best in the league. That's kind of like yeah, starts to live. Like, how was your yeah. first one? <laughs> I mean, like it it was it was a beyond an honor because it was like all right now I felt like I'm I'm amongst like my my whole thing coming in the league like I didn't want to do nothing so I felt respected by my peers like mm -hmm. I didn't care about nothing else like my biggest thing was like I want to be respected by my peers like. That's my biggest thing. I want to have that respect. You know what I mean? I want motherfuckers to know, like, yo, when you play against DeMar, like, man. You he know does, what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I I always wanted that. So for me to make the all-star team, it made it, it finally made me feel like, all right, I belong. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sense. Like, I belong. All right, cool. Like, I could, I could, I could, I could laugh a little bit more because I'm amongst. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? Yeah, I could, I, I could, you. I could be a little bit more uh, outspoken bit. because yeah. now I'm amongst. Yeah. The real ones, you know what I mean, yeah. and and that was my, that was my whole, that was like my 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 welcoming for me, to the NBA. You know what I mean? I think it was like my fourth or fifth year, so to get there it was like cool, like you know what I mean. Especially for me, I seen a couple other dudes that you know that came in lead that was all stars before me, and it was like damn, 
I just want to see. I want, that. I want to see how I feel. You know what I mean? It's so, motivation. Yeah, you know? definitely motivation. I'm listening to the different levels of it because, like, I never got to make an all star, mm-hmm. so I had to get the validation that you're speaking of. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I belong. I had to get that in the in the off season. Yeah, because yeah. I felt like that was the the truest time where I got to be, be the, yeah. the realest me, yeah. where it was like I could still see them people. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I played in environments where it was gonna be them people, mm-hmm. all the all stars, and you know that who we at hoops. So mm-hmm. we even we was out here playing in LA, or UCLA, or something. It would be like now I get to see all of those people. And I ain't got none of these restrictions yeah. that I got to deal yeah, with. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes it's politics and it's different things. So that's why I had to get my my yeah. my validation yeah. from. How was your experience in going to the dunk contest? Like, yeah. like, like talk about that because I don't think people realize, you know, how, how difficult that is and how that when you get on that stage, it's just you and the world. It's yeah. like not really you against yeah, the other dunk. Like, no, yeah. I, like talk yeah. about that feeling when you go sit on that little block. <laughs> Cause I know as a three point shooter, yes. I always try to like go from the perspective yeah. that I'm just shooting the ball. Right. Like it's All not right. as hard to do yeah. what y'all doing. So yeah. tell me like your perspective of, of experiencing that, the whole dunk contest and everything. I'm gonna be honest because I don't think I could do it now. I think being young, you so naive of the fact, and you really don't understand like, yo, it's millions of people <laughs> having a high expectations on seeing something, yeah. you know what I mean? And being young and as a kid, you just like, you know, you just overly excited. Yeah. So that clouds everything that's really going on, you know what yeah. I mean? But looking back at it, it's kind of like, it's a crazy situation. I commend anybody who get out there and be like, yo, all right, because the expectation is so high. You know what I mean? People are expecting you to do something to ooh, ooh, you know what yeah. I mean? So for me at the time, I'd, I'd be lying to you if I told you it was like, oh man, I was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just excited just to go out there and have the opportunity and you see celebrities and all these people sitting out there. I'm excited yeah. just to be on TV, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's it's, but looking back on it, it's it's man, it's a fucking crazy. It's a crazy moment getting in them situations. Tell me how it felt to to have All Star Weekend in Toronto, and I remember being there because like Andre, you know, I was uh, waiting yeah, for the Pistons. Yeah, Andre, yeah, you remember. make the All Star game, so mm-hmm. I come strolling up, and I can and I remember just coming in like I mean, I don't know if you guys, remember, I come in like yeah, with yeah. Dre, and it's like I'm looking at them like. Y'all, I, I don't know if you had your kid. I know Cal had one of his kids, if not both yeah. with him. And y'all in the locker room, I'm looking at them like, and I remember having a quick thought like, you know, LeBron them over here, yeah. this, all of this that was going on. But I was like, these dudes at the crib. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this ain't never happened yeah. to T-Dot. And I remember having that moment thinking like, man, they got this going on. Y'all got Drake looming over mm-hmm. the whole weekend, mm-hmm. being like the host. Like, yeah. tell me how that felt to get, like you said, from when you come in, Old guys, yeah. you the young pup trying to figure it out. Then it's like y'all was trash and all yeah. this. Y'all went through y'all periods and you were there through it all. Yeah. To now, y'all and y'all, you know, like you say, fifty wins. We prevalent in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. We a team. We mm-hmm. a competitive team. And now we got all star. We got an ambassador in mm-hmm. Drake, who's like this global icon. Like, tell me how all that was for y'all. You know, Man, what I'm saying? it was amazing because it go back to the point of like being such an underdog and overlooked and not even paid attention to, to where we making noise. And that was the whole goal was the like, yo, we gotta make them respect us. You know what I mean? Because one, it was always like, you, we not gonna be on TV cause we in another country. It was always all these excuses yeah, about yeah, something. Right. So we always used to have conversations about, yo, winning solves everything. You know what I mean? Winning will bring everything. We win, you get paid, you get paid, you get paid. This come, this come, we we win, you know what I mean? So for us to start winning, to people start paying attention, people seeing how the fan base is, to all of a sudden like, we got All-Star Weekend here? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It, it everything, crazy, yeah, y'all. everything Listen, was going, going right. Like, everything was going in the right direction. It was crazy with Cole's shit too. You remember how Cole was? I was about to say, listen, two things. It was it was cold. It was cold as ice, boy. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yes. I went out there trying to be, you know, you be trying to be at All Star mm-hmm. Weekend, trying to be fly with your little jacket. Drip and on. Listen, boy. Some of them play. I never. We had to go to the Jordan party. You got dropped off way over here. You know, it was some like. First of all, I got to see Prince that night. You hear me? Prince performed mm-hmm. at the Jordan party. Like perform. Mm-hmm. I ain't never seen Prince. Yeah. That was like my sister lost her mind. I was. I got videos in my phone to this day. But like, yo. 
T dot was one of the cold. It was cold oh. and it was cold. You yeah. feel me? It was like it was a dope y'all. T dot put on, boy. It was it was a sick event, mm -hmm. but it was definitely cold as hell. Yeah. Let me uh ask you about like I love when the playoffs when Toronto was in the playoff y'all mm -hmm. fan base. How the games be so hype. Yeah. Everybody color coordinated and and it just be crunk. How's them playoff games and how people be outside? Like how is them? The, the the atmosphere in them, man. I I, I seen that atmosphere. Uh, I would never say a name. I seen them break a certain player. Like, See, I seen the crowd break a opposing player. Like, you see the confidence is just like get sucked away. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I never seen nothing like that. But the the crowd was so crazy to where. I couldn't hear myself speaking to another teammate. You know what I mean? Like, that's how crowd crazy the crowd were. I'm talking about from outside to when you leaving a loading dock after the game, fans waiting out there. You know what I mean? It was, yeah. it was it was something that was beyond crazy, and I appreciate it so much because, again, you see the growth of it. You know yeah. what I mean? You see where it came from. You see why they are the way they are. You know what I mean? And to think about it, we represent the whole country. You know what I mean? It's just us. So everywhere we went in Canada, yeah. it was like that. You know what I mean? So it was it was one of those unique situations to where it was like, yo, these like y'all crazy. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But you gotta love it. Let me say this about their fans, right? So when I worked for the Pistons, the Raptors were probably the team. Me personally, they were the team I wanted to beat the most every time. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter. It was worse if it was our home game. You can attest yeah, to this. Yeah. Detroit Pistons home games against the Raptors? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro. <laughs> they that wall, I bro. never yeah. understood it. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I came in. I was like, what is happening? Yeah. How is yeah. it they home? Fans, crowd, jerseys, chants. Mm -hmm. You think you are in Toronto because yes. it's like somehow Michigan and, and it's so, the borders are so close mm -hmm. and it's, Bro, it be so many Toronto yeah. fans there. I was so tired. I was aggravated just from the presence. Like, this yeah. is some bull. Like, what yeah. is happening? This yeah. is not their building. They became the team. I didn't care. I was like, we got to beat them. Like, yeah. dog, we got to shut these people up. They in our building. Mm -hmm. More than we are. It was crazy. That was when I knew. I said, oh, no, they got some sick fans. Like, bro, they coming up. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Tell me this, how did it feel when you found out you was going to sign the the $139 million max? Because like that's, you know, you didn't get, that was what your third deal, right? Outside, yep. of, well, your yep. second outside your rookie yeah. deal. Yep. So you didn't got a decent, you set, mm -hmm. you didn't see more money yeah. you even thought you'd yeah. ever see, but like this is like different type yeah. of bread. Like how did that feel? Man, like, you know, it's crazy. I remember negotiating that and you know, obviously the team going to negotiate, try to get their leverage. And I remember the first offer was a hundred, and I was like, "Oh shit, cool!" Like, <laughs> right, right. Take, I'm I'm excited <laughs> off that. You know what I mean? Like, my no. agent like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, "What you mean, no? I messed this up, like, nah, like... don't don't fuck this. You talking about a a hundred? I'm I'm good with that. You know what I mean? It's like, no. You know you could. And I'm like. Don't fuck this up. You know what I mean? You for real. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, is you just talking or what? Like, he's like, no, I'm telling you, that's their job is supposed to, you know, shoot this, but we we don't trip. We gonna get it to what we need to get it to. So I appreciate the honesty and the realness of this. This is the real like I mean, that's you know, real when you first see bro, type money like this, you like what you I'm mean? keeping like, it real. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, I remember seeing them numbers. I remember he wrote it down to me because he didn't want to say it out loud. He wrote it down to me. And I'm like, I'm on the table like, cool. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, take it, you know what I mean? But, but then, you know, we went to another room and he told me and I'm like, it even fucked me up even more. Like, you, I could what, you know what I mean? So we ended up working out, getting getting into the number 139. Even when I did did it, it still didn't feel real. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, it didn't feel real to me. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't. Like I couldn't understand it, you know what I mean? Like it just didn't, it didn't hit, hit. Then in my mind, I'm thinking like, all right, I got, I got to work my ass off, so, you know, this could mean something, you know what I mean? Like I, I didn't feel like I was in a celebration, 
celebrating mood. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to get to work at that you point. You know what I mean? You were That's why you came out and, and, and ran that, off them. But games. that was yeah, that was my that was my like whole, you deserve that. Like I deserve that. And I I wanna make sure that nobody could say anything other than me deserving this. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? And that was my whole mindset. So wait a minute, what, what's your agent name? Aaron Goodwin. Good job, Aaron Goodwin. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pulling the young buck to the side, yeah. said, whoa, young fella, whoa. Man. But you in the category not off of coming off that, you in the category with like Jordan and World Be Free and, and certain players who start off a season that score 30 or more points in like six to eight games. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's crazy coming out just shooting right. at everybody. It was, it was, anytime you in a, in a category with MJ, you know what I'm saying? Not to mention, like you said, world be free, yeah, yeah, tiny yeah. arch ball, and our tiny, he don't get yeah. crazy. He was yeah, a he buck, was cold, boy. yeah, <laughs> man. It was crazy, but that was my mindset. Like, nah, man, ain't y'all ain't about to say nothing about this. <laughs> I, I got a question. This question is for me and you, cause me and you are dunkers. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying. We gonna lead the little guys out of this. Yeah, but you got a lot of dunk on. Like you can dunk yeah. on a lot of people, but you dunked on when you came back to Toronto and you dunked on the young fella. And yeah, yeah. Like that was that was like that uh, was not right. That was like yeah. a <laughs> I, I got a funny story to that, bro, that she mentioned that. So uh so young fella the that summer before that season, we was hooping at UCLA and a lot of um a lot of teams was up there. So the Raptors was up there. So he was there. I d I didn't really know who he was. So I'm going to the basket probably like two, three times in a row, and I'm getting past everybody, I'm getting to the basket, and he blocking it. He blocked my shot like three times. And I'm like, who is this? You know what I mean? I don't, he, and I took offense to it, to where it's like, yo, he, you know, he yelling and all that. So when we played, <laughs> when we played, bro, and I went to the basket, I seen him coming. I'm like, all right, you're not bigger than me or stronger than me. Worst thing you could do is foul me. So I went to the basket with that in my mind from the previous summer of him just blocking my shots. Like, yo, I'm going to the bucket. I'm about to. Dunk the shit out this ball. Either he gonna get out the way or he gonna foul me. So that's violence. that's how it really happened. Oh though. god, I didn't even think you were finna dunk it, but you you dunk. Is that your favorite dunk on? That's probably my favorite dunk on. I ain't gonna lie because you, since, in Toronto, in just Toronto, the whole. I'm telling you, like, yeah, you just whole, put the finger signs. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. You, you know that's what, what I'm saying. I said when I saw it, I said I say I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> I said that mean a little bit more different. I say yeah. because you just the. Everything in it, yeah. I say that was like yeah. it was a whole lot of like any any type of frustrations was just like finish him. All in that. And yeah. then I it knew was... because the, it was the extras. He don't do no extras yeah. ever. Yeah. He don't do yeah. nothing. Yeah. I yeah. say when he yeah. did, I say yep, that's yeah. stamped the that... cherry on top. I yep. say yeah, y'all take yeah. that and put that in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When they won a championship, when Toronto won a championship, did it feel like you just needed a couple of more years to get the ultimate goal? Uh, yeah, I felt like that next year, regardless, like, you know, because, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't get past one person, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that was our biggest, you know, obstacle was one person, you know what I mean? So, that year, knowing that, you know, he, he was leaving, you know, we, we felt like, you know, all right, we, we, we got a shot at this thing. Let's yeah. give it all we got. If, if it don't work then, all right, cool. Like, Maybe it's really time for us to blow up, one of us to leave, maybe, whatever, you know what I mean? But I really felt like that next year, you know, cause our team was 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 equipped for it, yeah, built for stacked, it, like, you know what I mean? We, 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 was, we was always right there. So that next year, I, I truly believe like we would've got it regardless. Now you in San Antonio and um, you, you about to play with Coach Pop. Mm -hmm. Like how, how was that playing with legendary Man. coach like Pop? It was it was one I always had like the utmost respect for Pop, you know, and even a little inter interaction we always had playing against each other was it was it was dope, just a m mutual respect. But playing for him, I remember when I got traded to him, you know, I remember he gave me a few days and he gave me a call and telling me, um, you know, I don't want you to be upset. We didn't trade you, we traded for you. You yeah. know what I mean? So those words kind of like hit. Hit me, hit me hard when he told me that because it was like, all right, cool. Like now I'm about to come in there and just you know work my ass off. I'm, you know, listening and everything. We kind of like build a, uh, a a relationship, you know, on a daily basis of always talking and everything. And you know, and a lot of it had to do with stuff outside of basketball. And mm -hmm. that's what I appreciate and love the most about Pop was, you know, he was he was a teacher 
like a life teacher, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who cared and, and had humanity, humility with like just people, you know what I mean? You, and it's hard to find that. You, mm -hmm. you play for certain coaches that just want to coach you. You need to do this, do this, do this basketball. But it was like, nah, how are you really? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And right. talk about life stuff. So, you know, that was, that was the dope thing about Pop. How much easier did he make it for you? Like, cause I, cause like I can speak from experience. When I got, I had my one season in Phoenix. We were sixty-two and twenty. Mm -hmm. Time of my life as far as like winning in the mm -hmm. NBA, kicking ass, and you know what I'm saying. Then I get traded, mm -hmm. boom, to New York, the worst team in the yeah. league. Right? You didn't go from you know the best to worst, but like at the same time, you went from a place where you had made home and had been mm -hmm. there for a very long time. Really, had just resigned, and now you see the team having that type of success. Yeah. How was how was that to sit and watch and experience? Because I know for me, I was pissed. Yeah. I was watching, I can remember, I, I told Roger I did, I did a little show with him. I, told, I said, I was watching him like, no, nah, I don't like the shit out of him. He take, right. that's my shot. You right. just yeah, took yeah, like, yeah, God yeah, damn it, yeah. like, this is bull. I'm yeah. over here in purgatory getting my ass kicked yep. every night and you on the team winning and having fun like yeah. I was used to doing. Like, how, how did that, like, how was that to deal with in real time? Because I know mm -hmm. it's not, you know, we, we say this and that, but it's not the easiest thing no, to do. it's not. With. I mean, but that you got to be real with yourself when it comes to those emotions. Like it was hard as shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was tough because you start to look at, especially for me. Then everything was always in comparison. It, you know exactly, what I mean? Like, they exactly. They do this well. This didn't happen with Demar. Was you know what I mean? It was always that. Even the people who just don't know basketball, exactly. At especially all. now, yeah. like imagine you had to deal with that then with social media. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like boy. It, it would have been, it would have made it 10 times um, worse. Yeah. You feel me? So for me, it was like every time you see something, it's like, ah, then it's like you, you see a game, and it's like, damn, I, I chose to pick these jerseys this year. You know what I mean? Right. Like everything mm -hmm. down the line. And you'd be lying to yourself if you if you sat up here and say, man, I ain't feel no way. A lot of motherfuckers be saying like, nah, oh, no, was you tripping? I'm... Man, I, yes, that, yes, you felt you felt it all. You know what I mean? Nothing wrong with feeling something. Yeah, there's nothing. That means nah, that's it, the it, truest it, human emotion yeah. to feel something. That's, but see, that's why I, a lot of times I have a problem with, you know, like you said, the people that don't know basketball, didn't like some fans, you know, I know fans all mean well and stuff, but like, don't tell me that I can't be pissed off right? Yeah. or I can't be upset or have a human emotion mm -hmm. about a lot of this stuff that y'all trying to tell me, oh, don't be mad at the real life. Man, are you kidding me? If yeah. I got called bad calling, you might lose your mind way right. more than yeah. I would. But like, you talking about like, bro, I've been in this place for nine, 10 years. Like mm -hmm. my family is growing here. We got friends and family. We have a community yeah. we've grown. Like now you just snatched that away from me mm -hmm. after it wasn't supposed to be. I'm not supposed to feel nothing. Right. Like what you mean? Yeah. You tripping. You know, we all watched the dream team. How was it for you to, you know, be announced to play with the USA team? That was that not was, in high school, the real yeah, deal. Real, yeah. But that that same way I felt with the All Star situation. It was like, all right, cool. This another step of now saying I'm one of the like, best yeah, in now the world. I'm because it's only twelve that get yeah. paid for this. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, the... now it's like, all right, cool. Like now I'm continuing going in the right direction. Just with all the hard work and you know preparation, everything I put into the game is 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 giving it back. So to be on that list, be on the all I mean USA team, representing your country for one, and being amongst eleven of the great greatest players in in the world, you know what I mean? It, it was it was like all right, cool. Like now I can laugh a, I can laugh a little bit more, but it was it was something that was like. Never expected, you know what I mean? It was right. never one of my goals saying like, man, I want to play on a USA team. I wanted this, this, but you know, when it came about, like I had to do it, you know what I mean? Man, you're marking all the checks off the list for the yeah. Hall of Fame. So yeah. You're doing right there. Clearly we had the Vince Carter jump over Fred Weiss, wife, mm -hmm. however you want to say it. When he jumped over him, that was probably the craziest dunk and USA basketball, which you had probably the right there if you would have made, your miss was probably still second, second when you did the 360, <laughs> like like for real. Like what was going through your mind when you went to do that? Cause you, cause like, don't tell me, I know you saw him, you saw the steps, yeah. and you did what you did. What what led to that when you was running um, up and what like, like what happened? I, it was, was crazy. It, we was blowing them out. I remember it was it was a timeout before that, and I think it was like DeAndre Jordan, KD, Melo, 
the markets. Somebody was like, man, do something. You know what I <laughs> mean? It was like, man, like do something. I didn't know what I was going to do. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, bet, cool. And I, as soon as we came out the, the timeout, I think we would have like possession or two. It was a foul. It was a free throw. Out the free throw, Draymond kicked it up to me. And I just seen dude there. I don't know what got into me, but I just remember that conversation in, in, in the huddle, like, yo, just do something. And just my instincts forced me to do a 360 to try a 360 on him. So if you watch the video, you see KD run off the bench and almost underneath the court because it was like <laughs> I told him like, all right, I'm about to, I'm gonna try something. <laughs> like I didn't know what though. Well, hell, I didn't. Know, I thought it was just because that was so crazy. I didn't know it was because it was a prior conversation. No, it was a prior you was conversation. Told to do something yeah. crazy. You it was, went to try to do something damn bro. crazy. That it was, was a prior conversation. <laughs> Man, that's yeah, that's one we got to get back, man. We gotta get I, I wish, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and I was so mad after the fact that I missed it. Like, I I hate seeing the video now because it's like, yo. And they send it to you all the time. Yes, I see it all the time. <laughs> I'm just like, how did I miss this? Like, I just wish I would have made it for history. You know oh, what I mean? Like, that's. Yeah, def- yeah, for the history. Now, your journey is to Chicago. I know it was a lot of teams that you could have decided that you, you wanted to go to, but and why Chicago? Why Chicago? Yeah. What you see in Chicago that you was like, man, I'm intrigued to to play with them guys. Um besides one, the, you know, it being one of the best cities. Yeah, besides ever in the world. It being that's that's definitely a fact. Besides it being one of the best cities. Um what they what they was building, you know, obviously it was a big you know, you I paid attention to it. We all know how it worked when certain moves are made during the mm-hmm. season. Like, so when they made that move for Vucevic early, early on midway through the season last year, I'm like, all right, let me see what this is. And the crazy thing, a lot of people don't know me and Vuce been like trying to figure out how to play with each other I for years. I, I, yeah. I, I, I totally overlooked like, that y'all played together. I forgot that I missed that whole yeah. part. So yeah. you know. We always, when he was in Orlando, we always would be like, let's figure it out. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, yeah. let's figure it out, let's figure it out. So when that happened, it was like, all right. I remember playing against each other um, this past season. He was like, yeah, you're a free agent this summer. I was like, yeah. It's like, I'm gonna call you, you know what I mean? So when I seen that happen, obviously I've always been a fan of Zach. Um, hell of a player, hell of a talent and deserve everything that's coming his way. You know what I mean? And and wanted to be a part of that. That was the dynamic that I looked at. And obviously you bring in Lonzo Ball, Lonzo another Ball. player I that, like that has so much potential mm-hmm. that haven't been sought, sought out. Um, it just felt right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just felt right. And it's something that I want to be a part of to where it was like, all right, well, let's do it. It took me back to that whole underdog yeah. mentality that I had my whole career to where yeah. it's like, you know, like imagine go there and win in Chicago. Oh yeah, it's yeah. gonna be, oh, my God. It's, it's be gonna crazy. Be crazy. You know what I'm be crazy. He's about to get yeah. some of the best fans in the it's world crazy. on the planet, period. Loyal down for you, gonna be with they, you and gonna cheer mm-hmm. and support. What I wanna know is now you come as an OG. Mm-hmm. You you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we talked about it earlier, you caught in the door, nineteen year old young boy, you know, rookie young. Now you come into a team and you, you know, you've been with the Raptors as long as you've been there. You've gone to, you know, San Antonio and I feel like, you know, you had to learn some great stuff from mm-hmm. Pop and that whole organization. What do you feel that you bring in to this Bulls? Cause like you say, they they relatively young group. You got Vooch, who's a who's a vet, kinda mm-hmm. like you are. Lonzo and Zach aren't young, young guys, but they still young in this league. Yeah. They still need, you know, got some learning to do. So what do you think you guys will bring to that team, uh, especially for me, I, I mean everything other than you know, I've, in my career, I've, I've done did everything other than make the final shit. Right, you know what I mean. So with the experience that I've had throughout my years playing with great coaches, great players, um, understanding the game, understanding what it looks like when when the ups and downs come, understand the men- mentality and maturity you got to have to stay even keel through it all. You know, a lot of that becomes contagious when you have that in the building. I think that's the importance of just always having great vets around that understand the game overall. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Once you get that element and aura around 
other talents that haven't experienced it, it, it becomes contagious and it, it could carry on to the court. And, you know, that's that's my goal, obviously, to work that thing and everything being there, but also that veteran understanding and leadership that I could kind of put everything together that I'm just excited to have with all these players that, one, I'm fans of, and two, that deserve, you know, to experience what it feels like to win. Yeah, I'm excited to see how, you know, I mean, it's kind of like historically guys coming off the, mm-hmm. the USA experience, you yeah. know, they come into the season and go crazy. So I'm yeah. excited to see, I mean, you know, I don't work for the Bulls or anything like that. I work for the Magic, but I, I you know, I support the Bulls and watch what y'all are doing. So I'm excited to see, you know, Alonzo, you, Zach, obviously coming off USA, and he already been lighting it up at the crib. And, um, Vooch, I feel like, you know, y'all got a, a, a – and then, you know, the the, the Williams kid uh, from Florida yeah, State, He, yeah. I, I think he's got a chance to have a really good career and be a really For good sure. piece. And I, yeah. I just like the team. Man. I think y'all got a, a real solid foundation, what y'all are building over there yeah. with the squad. Yep. Tell me about the impact that Kobe had on you and your game. Because, I mean, when he his fingerprints and are all over your game. When yeah. you look at the foot, the, you know, the footwork of your game, the mid-range, how no matter what, you know, how the errors have changed, mm-hmm. you stuck consistent with, with that crazy mid-range game and being able to do that. And I feel like you evolved to that yeah. kind of the way he did, but yeah. coming into the league as an athlete, yeah. young kid. Talk about the impact that he had on your game just watching Kobe. Outside of my dad putting the ball in my hand, Kobe was my imagination to play basketball, you know what I mean? Like, obviously I'm a fan of Jordan, obviously, but being from LA, right? really being seven, eight years old, really watching and understanding basketball, it was consistently always Kobe, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So that's who gave me my imagination to go in the living room and do the, you know, the the shoulder shake, the mm-hmm. fadeaways, this and that. All right, when we go to the park, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do, you know what I mean? To where I just continue to build off that to where, you know, I gain a, a, a emotional connection to my favorite player through the TV. And by the time I was 16 years old, the next thing you know, every summer I'm with him, working with him, playing with him in, in the off season, you know, getting words and preparation from him. So Cole was basically like my everything because like, you know, I'm I molded like my groundwork was from him just watching him. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So you and just see it. Yeah, so it just it just took off from there. And you know, I got my Kobe's on right now. Yeah, yeah. So um what's the reason that you wear Kobe's every every game? First of all, how is they so elite? He got one of the yeah, coldest Kobe you got games. Them. Yeah, that would be like a lot of people want to wear Kobe's, but yeah. you be coming. I see you on the nice kicks and yeah. all the little sights and this, and you be having the eliteness, yeah. the joints that, that people ain't really got. That go back to our conversation. This probably go back to my, my senior year in high school. Um, he used to give me a lot of a lot of his shoes mm-hmm. to wear. Um, certain shoes that didn't wasn't out yet. How did that feel? You in high school no, and yeah, Kobe giving you exclusives give me, that ain't never coming me out of stuff. exclusive shoes and I'm like, bro, and I, people didn't believe it. Like a lot of people <laughs> didn't believe it then. I can't go around and be like, man, Kobe gave me these, but you know, he did, but it was crazy because, you know, he was always on, he was always big on me just having the shoes. You know what I mean? And even if you go back to when I was in college, you know, he sponsored, he made sure USC was sponsored by Kobe's. So we wore mm. the Kobe Ford and had our own colorways while I was in college mm. from the relationship that we had. You know, and it, it 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 all started back from high school and it just carried over by the time I got to the league. Kind of the same thing y'all had, like with the Team Jordan thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cole wanted to kind of transition towards that and have, you know, his own set of players that, you know, the Mamba situation that right. he had. So... I was the first one to start it yeah. with the whole Kobe situation through our relationship. And, you know, it just built from there as he, you know, started to pick and other players started to come up and everything. But I am I was the first one. I What's was your the, favorite pair? My favorite pair, oh, that's a good question. Probably the fours. The which f- four? Like, yeah. Which variation? Like, that's what I'm about. That's how it's so hard to say it's, a favorite It's pair. so hard. A like, million pairs and a million variations. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Like, and they're so comfortable. They comfortable. I, for me, I go with the ones because you know you started with the ones. You score eighty one in the ones, and I think a few years ago that was big. I wanted to make sure I had a, a colorway for the ones. I think I did the Raptor colors, but 
the ones I, I gotta go with the ones. Yeah, I wanna hear some breaking news right here. Mm. I've never ever in my life owned a pair of Kobe's. Really? Mm. Not ever. Really? Yeah. It's you not even game, but, man. it ain't even first of all, I you already know pair. why it, it ain't it's <laughs> not pair. because of any disrespect, like I've only ever wore Jordans. Right, yeah. And to be honest, like I've never worn anybody else's shoes. But mm. just how you say I had the coldest Kobe's, you had the coldest J's. Yeah. You know so that's what I'm saying. It's not yeah. any, out of any disrespect no, yeah. to and Kobe I, at all. I, yeah, the only I, other person's shoes I could ever say I've ever worn was Mellow's. Because me and Mellow were the same size. Oh, and okay, we switched yes. out our retro. That's Jordan too, though. But they were Mellow's. They had his name yeah, and shit on. That's Jordan. They don't, they don't really count. Once you part I did Jordan, have some heat though. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know. Y'all, I mean, you know, but that's why I say it's not out of disrespect. Nah, yeah, it was yeah. just thought like, cause people call me a sneakerhead and I always de- decline it. Yeah. I deny it because I've never went and sought out a look for anything. Yeah, I yeah. just take what's received, what's given yeah, happily yeah. and gratefully. But like I'm I would fall short of doing that. I'm not standing in lines or doing none of the work to be a real sneakerhead. Right, right, that, yeah. My city love me like DeMar DeRozan. Ooh. You know, we all hip hop fans. We grew up on hip hop. The hottest rapper in the game. I mean, you know him like that. Y'all yeah. tight like that. <laughs> you know, to hear your name in, in the rap songs and, and stuff like that. Like, how is that when you hear your name in a rap song, especially coming from somebody like Jerry? Man, obviously, I, it's it's always an honor whenever whenever you hear your name in a song, period. It's, it's beyond an honor. But when Drake did it, I mean, obviously he he the biggest, the coldest in the game, and um, you know that is my partner. You yeah. know what I mean? that is my <laughs> that is my dog. Yeah. And, um, I, I maybe said it once, but it was a couple years ago. I went to his concert, um, and we sitting backstage and we just joking and talking, or whatever. And he was like, "Man, when you gonna put my name in the song?" He's <laughs> like, "Man, we, I gotta find something that rhyme with it." You know right. what I mean? And like we was just joking or whatever. Yeah. Um, all from just sitting back in the back just chilling just talking stuff the next thing you know i mean he told me when he did the song like yeah last year um but to hear it when it came out it was like you know what i mean it's yeah. just, it's drake you know what i mean, like, <laughs> but I mean for, for me i felt like that was like full circle type moment like you know what i'm saying inside yeah. of everything that happened and just still here like yes. you know what i'm saying like yeah. when he like you said, it's one he's of the stamina. biggest global yeah. icons, period. And he's saying that his city love yeah. him like they right. love DeMar yeah. DeRozan. Yeah. Like, that is a crazy it's, bar to it, me, like, that, to say that, that he's claiming that he get love in his city like he yeah. do. And, and that's the crazy part about it, bro, because it's like people, everybody know how much I love that, that city, that that country, and what it did for me. And, you know, I... I like I, I grew there as a as a man, you yeah, know what right, I mean. Yeah, like yeah. I, I became so much there, and it's a test to them, you know yeah. what I mean. And and the love and and the support to this day that that they show, you know, it's crazy for the biggest person from there to even to mention that. But you know, and, it, and it's just dope for me to have a friendship and relationship that I have, you know, with him as well. So. Um, it, it definitely was crazy. It was definitely when, he, crazy. Uh, when he came to the team and started being around the team, get the season ticket tickets, and uh, being part of y'all team, like how was that for y'all team to have him part of it? Because he's, he's he's deep into it. I like what he brings yeah, yeah. to awesome. to that right. organization and all that. Yeah. The jerseys, the jerseys, jerseys, all that. It's I love crazy, all that from court. him. Um, was was dope about that is like. It's not an act with him. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's it's he's the most genuine individual you could come by. So yeah. everything that you see is it's that's really real. Him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really him. It's not I'm not doing this for no publicity reason. I'm doing this because, you know, I really care. And, you know, people don't know it's been plenty of times where the stuff we had good games or bad games. He'd be the first ones to come back there in the locker room, get everybody uplifted, always have positive things to mm-hmm. say, you know what I mean? Inviting people to, you know, certain, it's, it's just, he's just a real individual yeah, when it comes to come, Not come sometime, those. you're not Yeah, he's not cool. sometime, yeah. he's not, because there's more stuff he do behind the scenes that's not even seen, you know yeah. what I mean, or spoke about. That's even more dope than what people you actually see, see you yeah. know what I mean? And that's, that's what makes him a hell of a person, you know what I mean? It's crazy and it's like, it's cool when your team, have a connection with the biggest star in the world. You biggest know what I mean? Star in the world. And even for me, like I remember my to see him become who he is, like my my rookie year is when, you know, he first started. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So to see 
him grow, grow yeah. see his growth, see where everything comes. Put y'all in parallel. It's, yeah, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the craziest thing to, to witness because people think it, it come overnight. But I remember where, you know, we used to go out and it would be. It wasn't as crazy as it is now. Yeah, you know what I mean? It'd be <laughs> yeah, a regular and nobody even paying attention. You yeah. know what I mean? You could walk in and walk out of somewhere and nobody even paying nah, attention. Like now it's mob, like, nah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's crazy just. You know, now I tune into the biggest ever. Yeah, <laughs> and he got some good dudes around him, like his crew, man. Yeah, everybody. Like, man, like shout even, out the future, man. Yeah, future, man. like everybody around. Every that's and that's the crazy thing. One thing, everybody around him, from Chubbs to Mark to everybody that's that's good around people. him, like they they family. And yeah, good even people. if I see them, it's it's the same thing. You know what yeah. I mean? They they all family, without a doubt. This is what I want to ask though, because you've seen a lot of bread. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? A lot of little, you know, I saw when you were going through the contract negotiations, money ain't a big deal. I'm trying to find, I'm like, that's a, that's a privileged ass position, boy. You know what I'm saying? I let you know you done seen a lot of that shit. Of you, shit. you feel me? So what I want to know is like, you know, I don't want to hear about, yeah, I took care of mom and pops. We yeah. all did that, everybody. I want to know what DeMar DeRozan did. When you look back on it now as an adult, mm-hmm. did you feel like, the hell was you doing, young Demar? Like you should, but like at the time, you felt absolutely outstanding about it. Cause we didn't know about that big dumbass chain or a crazy watch or a car yeah. or what have you. What did you do to spend the bag that you look back on? Like, like yeah, that was me, dumb, right here. but like couldn't nobody <laughs> tell me nothing at the time. It was the, it was the best decision I made. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't think I, I never really like bought nothing. It's probably like the thing, like for example, like I remember to this day, I probably I always say I ain't doing that shit again. I think I took like seventy some people to Disneyland, mm. right? My whole family, they kids, friends. That was like a half ticket. I, 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 I time <laughs> out because people, people, if you this is if you know, you know, like because people may be like, well, what the fuck? No. trust me, the VIP that might yeah. come out to much more than anything I just named. <laughs> right. With the VIP act, it depends on what yeah. levels he went, yeah. but I'm yeah. just saying You like, know it's the VIP. Woo. Yeah, you Passing know it's the VIP. You know, you know it's the VIP, hey, look, bro. I ain't gonna, hey, look, he paid like he way right it's, there. 70 people, you had about 20 VIP people. Right. That's what I'm saying. You know, you know <laughs> it's like- only so many people Only so many people, and you know it's only a certain, you gotta have, yeah, it's like, one person, one VIP to like four or five, yeah, some ten people, some ten something people, like some you got like an eight hour minimum, right? With each Ooh. person, bro, it was crazy. It was crazy. I'm like, getting anxiety thinking about that. One. That's probably like the craziest thing because I like, had never been a car because like I always make like throughout the season I'd be like, yo, all right, if I if I'm all star or if I'm this or I get this many points, I get this car. Like I always put points. I always put those certain yeah, incentives on incentives myself. On you know what I mean? Yeah. So I ain't never really did nothing crazy other than like some like that, like you know what I mean. Like that's good. I mean, I could, like, I, could, I, could, I knowing what I know about you from the outside, I could see that and truly believe that because you didn't really jump out as somebody that's gonna be like, yeah, ah, like, like yeah, I feel I, I, I could vibe I, with like, that. I ain't gonna but, lie, to but you people. Don't but get that, it twisted. Listen, he paid a hefty I said, like tab. A half ticket. And when I say <laughs> listen, that probably was more than any of them listen. cars he talking about, like it's like I'm telling you, bro. bro I say this. Woo. I say this to this day. <laughs> when I see pictures from that day. I'm That's not the first doing thing that. You think I'm about. not doing that. I'm not doing that shit again. He don't think about the good times that we had. He thinks nah. about the bill he paid. Let us you know that that, that was up there and one of the biggest purchases. Yeah. And, you, and he ain't even get into the hot dogs and the concessions. That's and what I'm they, saying. Oh, Bro, I live was, in Disney World. Was, Trust me, it's yeah. a trap. No, that's it's what I'm a saying. Trap. Yeah. Just when you think you got away, it's a big ass wall of everything, everything. right at the exit. When you we think you're getting away, toys, Scott, we ain't talk- this is the spot where all the kids have the meltdown because this is the last chance we can get some shit. Yep. It's all right. You'd be like, yo, y'all wrong for this. What's your favorite food spot in Toronto that you've missed the most Man. that you used to always go and get that you, you don't get in the States? It was a restaurant there called Buca. It's like Buca. A Buca, B U C. Hey, it was an Italian spot, one of my favorite places to eat there. I want to say I might have been there when we came there from with the heat. I want to say Jo did a did a team. I wouldn't be surprised. There. Yeah, you know the Jo the big yeah. Big, that's the what, I, would, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I want to say he yeah. did a team dinner there, and it's they definitely got some bomb food. It's yeah. like 
very low ceiling type yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's yes, yeah. I think yeah. I I want to say he did a private team dinner there. Very good time. Shout out to Jo, the flyest one. I'm big on mental health. I feel mm-hmm. like mental health is important these days, and I feel like uh, a lot of people don't communicate within their own families, let alone outside of their families. Uh, you and Kevin Love was big on, you know, bringing that to the table and really talking about it first. Like, explain more about the mental health thing and uh, how the NBA got with you to do the whole setup. About um, it. yeah, I mean, shit, uh, mental health is probably you know, one of the most overlooked things that, you know, that don't get talked about, not just within our sports, just in general, you know what I mean? From the way, you know, especially how we all was brought up to where, you know, you know, suck it up, don't worry about it, just Straight this, up. this, this, yeah. you know what I mean? You like, don't. Yeah, yeah, you suck if you don't, you left, you less of an individual if you don't. Yeah. But really that's not true, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but we never had that understanding of how to approach it, how to talk about it, and how to deal with it. So when we went through dark times, we internalized it, you know what I mean? And, and it forced us to suppress it whatever way we felt was fit, you know fit, what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that could become detrimental in a long run. But sometimes you don't realize that until it's too late or, you know, you're in trouble or you got to really look in the mirror and face the facts, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So for me... The league getting behind and figuring out ways to help our players is definitely dope. But for me, it's us just expressing our stories that's inspirational from other people that's terrified to talk about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we we are looked at you know, like we superheroes. Yeah. But so we got a dollar amount. It's yeah, like we ain't we gotta, no problems we should have. Yeah, ever. we shouldn't have it. You know what I mean? Like I always say this quote. I, I wish everyone was rich so they could realize money isn't everything. Straight up. You know what I mean? Like, that's the realest thing. And even then, people was, still wouldn't understand it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But for me, it's just us, you know, I feel like when I hear certain people's story, like, I still, even if you just Joe Smoke, like, it becomes inspirational to me because you're showing vulnerability and you have a story that's behind it that made you resilient, made you successful, who, what, whatever. But the more we talk about it and express it and show that we could put our guards down because we all got a hell of a story, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was that was kind of like my thing, like 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 making it feel okay, not mm-hmm. being ashamed of it, not feeling like you you less of an individual because Cause we you not, go through yeah. something. Cause we not. Yeah, that made I had a lot of respect for both you and uh, Kevin Love when it came out. Cause like looking at it, it was like I think, like you say, most of, if not all of us, go through you know some type of mental health or the you know different adversary, ad, ad, yeah, adversaries when we going um, through life. And I felt like when I looked at y'all, I was like, damn, like you know what I'm saying, like that's definitely empowering and giving somebody else the courage to go out there because like I like you said, you. K Love, all of us has been in NBA. Somebody yeah. who's superheroes yeah. and showed that, you know what I'm saying, that you could be vulnerable enough to go out there and share mm-hmm. and let them know that, like, hey, look, you think this of me, and I'm showing mm-hmm. you that, hey, I'm going through this and I'm dealing with this, and I'm and, and you can still be good and have mm-hmm. a good life and be okay. And I'm sharing this with you when I don't really have to, showing mm-hmm. you that I'm not perfect and showing you there's no difference between me and you, even though you may really think right. it is. Like we the same. Everybody put their pants on one leg at a yep. time. That's the that's the kind the quote I use every yeah. time, like to truly really, really show people like, don't don't tell me that because I've made X amount of dollars or did whatever you think that I don't still deserve the, deserve the same human decency yep. that you do because it does, money doesn't change that. Like yeah. we still experience, you know, loss and death and all of those different yep. human type of emotions the same as you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm big about, I feel like uh, mental health is big on, uh, I'm big on communicating. Yeah. Like I got a best friend that I've been best friend for since third grade, mm-hmm. but these, last three, four years, we communicated and talked about deeper stuff way more than I did these last 20 some years yeah. with them is because I'm more open to yeah. communicate now yeah. or, or to talk to another person. And a lot of families don't come up. You you be in your household and none of y'all have a deep conversation Never. about yeah. nothing. Yep. 
that's pertaining about a feeling or emotion yep. or whatever going on. And a lot of people suffer that. So I was definitely uh, happy that y'all did that. Y'all spoke up. The first thing a person to come out and say is like, oh, you crazy. Yeah. Because <laughs> I want to go and talk to somebody and yeah. kind of get my thoughts yeah. out my own head that I'm crazy for. Mm-hmm. And that's how people will make you feel yeah. when it's it's okay for you to go and talk okay, to somebody. Yeah. That's why you so many people are reserved so much because they scared of that type of reaction. Yeah, yeah. You just, yeah like, some speed like, down now. Damn, not like I, man, whatever you need, do yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's okay to talk to whatever, and especially growing up in like the urban community, we were just taught. The complete opposite, you know what I mean? Opposite. To where it take you, like you said, it took me, what, I was 27, 28 years old to be like, man, fuck it. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, I was older than that. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? So it's just like, if we normalize it earlier and, and help kids who who go through so much that come home in the eighth grade that don't yeah. want to talk and you wonder why they sitting there in the corner yeah. not knowing what they contemplating because they don't know how to talk or express the, their express feelings their to get feeling. it out. You know what I mean? You could, you could, you could, you could cut so much stuff out. That kid ain't gotta wait till they twenty five or thirty. You yeah. know, the realest examples is that when you hear people, I've heard a lot of different people say, you know, uh, well, if you sprain your ankle, you get treatment. Right. If right. You, if you're feeling sick, you go to the doctor. Yeah. If you're feeling this, you get checked out. What? Like, why wouldn't you get checked out if you're feeling right. crazy? That's or, real. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. feeling overwhelmed. It's the same thing. Same it's thing. Just like a form of, of of treatment, like getting ice on your ankle if yep. you sprain your ankle or something. It's, same thing, you gotta get helped out. Start bench trade. Uh oh. Uh, twos. We're gonna go to two guard. AI, D Wade, Ray Allen. Oh. What? Oh my God. Disrespectful. Start bench cut. Yeah, trade him. Oh my God. We ain't gonna cut him. We're gonna trade him. Oh, trade. Start bench trade. Yeah, yeah he trying. He'd be nice. Oh, I don't my wanna God. cut nobody. AI, Ray, D Wade. Yeah. Damn. Ah, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> ah, this is gonna hurt. Start D Wade. Yeah. We finna trade. Oh my god. <laughs> Start D Wade. Damn, man, that's <laughs> Start D Wade. He just stuck, right? <laughs> oh my God, this is a tough one. Just, I just gotta just go say it. Start D Wade, <laughs> bench AI, Trey, Trey Ray. Ray. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry. Trading, trading, trading. I'm trading Ray because he. You gonna try and get you in yeah, trouble? Tra- <laughs> Ray, Ray, I love you. I know you was a Laker fan coming up, but what do you remember about the Clippers? Everything. I mean, I went the more us. I mean, I, yeah, for sure, y'all. No question, y'all. No, no question, y'all. But you know, it's crazy. Like, I went the more Clipper games than I ever been Laker so games. Right? Oh, no, we, 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 we had the people. So no, so yeah, we definitely had the people. We, you know, we, Lakers we, was the bougie fan. Yeah, we, we had we the had, people. I know. First of all, we had, had to give <laughs> about 25, 30% of our tickets away. Yeah. Make sure, like, you know, all the, all the schools, we get <laughs> yeah. the school kids yeah. do good at school. Like, we getting all yeah. that. We need that action. We yeah. used to come to the games. I used to come to the games, bro. So I used to, when y'all played, I used to be, bro, I went to so many games. It ain't many games I missed. Going to the Clippers. Right, so you, you got some like, Clipper love, and, and yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. We'll make sure because you might have been a black ass fan yeah, or something. You know, man, you know. The Lakers and all that stuff. Yeah. Hey man, listen, we always talked about that. The, 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 even though the Lakers was the Lakers, we hadn't carved out. It was kind of like a little hood portion, you know. Oh yeah, it, it that, was yeah. kind of bougie to be the Lakers fan, but it was kind of frowned upon. But like we still had our little <laughs> yeah, congregation of the yeah, people. You feel yeah. me? Is this right? You made a you, you dropped the song. You yeah. Got, you rapping now? I mean, it was crazy. Like, Hold <laughs> up, wait, we got bars we, in we the building? We get a Drake feature now. Yeah. We need, wait, <laughs> when so, the Drake feature come, we yeah. gonna be certified to get <laughs> and, Drizzy on the track. And that's what's crazy. He he heard plenty of my songs before, like a long time ago. Oh, so you'd have been in the stool with, you'd have been like, in the stool I done played them, yeah, I done played them, I done played them songs. Yeah, and, I would play too, you the best. I done played them songs and everything, but it was, that was like, you know how like a lot of guys go golfing, that's their hobby. 
Like that's just always been my hobby. But yeah. so I never thought I'd put a song out though. So I'm not even lying. Do we have a? Do we have a? But like you about to do your Dame Lily about to put out an album? Do we have a? I mean, you sound I, like you I got hella about songs in the chamber that you could put something out that you want. I, yeah, what's your? I, I don't know. I haven't got that far. Cause I never. <laughs> I never. I never thought I was gonna put a song. Put out. A, a Dame now on. I got to think about it. Now I got to have a whole promotion behind this. Like, yeah, you yeah, got to yeah, put a Dame on. That's, so, you know that's what I'm saying, bro. Like. Trust me, man. It, it's, uh, you I, need I'm, a man. So <laughs> <Look, I'm laughs> his, his first song is 500 million liquid. Yeah. I could imagine what that means, fella. But you know what I'm saying? I'll let you know what you know what I'm saying? I'll let you elaborate on that. You sound mighty damn good to me, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that's the name of the song. <laughs> that's the name yeah. of the song. Hey, look, I, I'm digging it. He say they about to go to the shy. He about to win, you know. I'm, I'm, I, I feel you. you I feel just me? feel, because I know, like, guys, I was one expressing as much as they was expressing themselves off the court. Yeah, when you first came into the league, to now seeing how guys can can make rap songs, yeah, make yeah. rap albums, yeah, yeah. they can do movies or do whatever they they choose to do. Like to see the the league change from when you first came in. A lot of guys weren't expressing themselves as much yeah. off the court. Yeah, to now, that's a that's a great question because. I, I always wonder that, especially from us, think about how many dudes we know that's talented, mm -hmm. that have so many capabilities other than just basketball. Yeah. But that's just, we let the world and social media box us in and just be one thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like everybody I know in the league got so many elements to them. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what makes them more amazing yes. other than just a basketball player. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I think just the freedom of guys just having that self awareness and confidence within themselves of, of just doing stuff. You know what I mean? I feel like today in today's generation, like, you know, it's a little different, you know, like with, with Dane, you know, Shump, it's a, it's a different look as, as far as like an athlete trying to come out with an album. I think it's more respected as long as that person take it serious. But I, I'm trying to figure out when can we get a collab? You got you, Dame, Shump, um, Lou Will, shit, shit. Lou, Lou Will, Will got yeah. bars. What's the boy from Sacramento? Uh, 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 big fella, Bag Bagley. Bagley, Bagley yeah. got bars. Yeah. He was going at it with uh, with somebody. Then you got Shaq D's with the OG. Like, man, we need to collab. But hoops out. Steven Jack, Stack Jack, flowing. What do yeah. we need to collab about? What's up, man? I mean, I'm with it. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to yeah, see a collab. All the hoopers getting on I'm there. No hate. You know, Oi. get some features. You know, get get hard and How about you, DJ Khaled? Nah, you I ain't need DJ Khaled. <laughs> and put it put it all together. No. Put it all together. Put the compilers together. Oh, no, no. Somebody I'm, gotta put it together. I'm a hype man. That's what <laughs> I do. Get, get me in that joint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you get, you get me in that joint. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hyped. I don't know about all no nah, no. Nah. Keep Cal going. Time out. Khaled do what? <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> you smart. <laughs> nah, Khaled do more than that now. Khaled got talent now. He putting together beats and all that. I ain't doing nothing. I could I can get on the track and talk some shit. Right, That's about right. it. Stop still, you know what I'm saying? I ain't doing all the everything else. All right, man, that's a wrap, man. This has been dope. We had the real deal. My main man, Compton Zone, DeMar DeRozan in the building with us. Real deal, Holyfield? Real deal. Okay, and you know that right. Appreciate you, my Appreciate guy. you, OG. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Appreciate you. OG. That's what it is. <laughs> OG. <laughs>